everyone. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast. This is Tim Brown. I want to revisit the application Hype by Tumult. They came out with some pretty good updates recently. As a matter of fact, you want to get an entirely new application. And for no extra charge if you already had it. There are some pretty nice features including controlling the size of your stage. Similar to Dreamweaver and other applications. If you had it before, you will recall if you had a big size dimension or a large size dimension for your stage, you sometimes couldn't see it all because you didn't have the option to zoom in. Whereas now if you go to the top right, you can you see now you have the option to control the percentage of how big you want your stage to be. This is a huge feature, particularly when you're working in the format that I'm working in right now, which is a thousand twenty four by 768 I can now see my entire project also there's the option to publish to iBooks author which I really can't wait to explore in a future episode right now I want to I thought I would explore a way to design a web app and I took a very simple approach just to sort of illustrate how this is done now, as you look at my uh, layout here, I basically just set up what you could consider a PowerPoint slide kind of layout. I have my buttons along the bottom, and I have divided this little website into four sections. Now, I want this to play on an iPad only. So, it's I guess you can say I'm creating this to be a web app. And I wanted to have the look and feel of an iPad app. You know, something that you will find in the App Store, but what you're accessing online rather than through an in store app. And I wanted the buttons to take you through the project. So, what I'll do is very quickly, I'll start with the home page. And I want to, I laid out my content first before I even dealt with the buttons I just wanted to make sure all my content was in place so I went through and just added different sections for the first category which is early years and then I went on to explore study abroad which is another section and then years in Haiti and then Africa so that's kind of how I laid my project out. By the way, this is a little project I'm doing on Lois Maylou Jones, an African American artist. Now I want this to play as a web app on my iPad. After I laid all my content out, I then, so I could figure out where everything was going to be, I could then set up my link. So I set up the five buttons that you see here each one corresponding with the different sections and where they're introduced within the project. Then I just copied the buttons and went to each slide and pasted those buttons into each section. Now where the sections change, for example, where early years becomes study abroad, that's where I went in and changed the button to black. So let people know that when they get to that section, they have reached a new area in the project, or a new category. And that's basically it. Now before you begin, if you want to set your project up like the way I did, I'll pull up the inspection, inspector menu here. You'll see that my project is 1024 pixels by 768 pixels. That's a full widescreen dimension for an iPad. So when you click on default sizes and see the drop down menu, you'll see that you have a lot of different options. You also have iPad Safari widescreen. And that's setting your project up so it will fit within Safari with the browser space still open at the top. I envision this project being opened in a full screen app where the browser would be hidden. And there are lots of other browser apps out there for you to use. Uh, to do that. So here's the widescreen 
Safari dimension. That would have been 1024 pixels times 690. And I went with the full widescreen. And as I mentioned before, you do have the option as well to set up for iBooks. Also took advantage of a feature that's only going to work in Safari, possibly Firefox, but will not work in Internet Explorer is adding transitions between scenes. So up here are all the different scenes, as they are called, that I set up. And I added transitions to each one. So for example, if I go home and I hit select one of the buttons, pull up the inspector menu, and then hit the mouse action inspector. And you notice here I set action as to on mouse click where I wanted to go. So that took me to the scene where I wanted to go. And that scene is birthplace, which is the next slide adjacent to it. And then you have transition. Transition actually adds an effect to your slide. So when you click on that button, it will introduce a transition that takes you to the next slide. It can be crossfade. It can be swap. It can be push left, push right, push bottom, or, or push from the top. And so I chose crossfade. So the whole project, every time you press on a button, it crossfades from one slide to the next. And that's pretty much it. That's how I set up my project. Just went to file, export to HTML and then created a folder in my root folder so that I can upload my files to my server. Okay, so when you're working in Hype, you export your files and you have, as a result, an HTML page as well as a folder with all of your resources. To the right of that, I actually made a little icon that's 70, 72 pixels by 72 pixels as a way of creating a custom home button. So when people go to your web app and they hit save to home screen, rather than settling for the default button that Apple generates, you can actually generate your own. And that's pretty simple. All you have to do is just change the name of it to Apple hyphen touch hyphen icon dot PNG and Apple will res recognize that as the home button automatically without doing anything. It will automatically create the round edges and you're set. I also created a loading image because there are times when when working in height your project will take a while to appear on someone first enters the address in the address bar, it'll just be a blank screen. Rather than have people wait for something to appear, you can add a loading image. Okay, so this is the main HTML page that is generated by Hype. And when you want to add a loading image or a preloader image to your Hype project, you basically look for the code that occurs within the lines that are actually designated, copy these lines to your document. And it will be this line of code right here. This is not, this line of code is not there when the file is first generated. So you copy this line of code designating what image you want to load when the project first opens. Okay, now that I have all of my files loaded up to my server, let's go ahead and see what this baby looks like. Okay, here's a view of my iPad, and I'm going to go ahead and first pull up a Safari browser. And this is what the app looks like when it's done. As you can see, pulling up a Safari browser, that my application is not... There's a, there's a part of it that's hidden because of the browser along the top. Well, that's not how I set it up. I set my application up to be full screen. 
But I, I did also keep that in mind so that if someone wanted to access the home button, I created a level underneath the main buttons so they could just pull up to access the home button. Now for the most part, when they're navigating through the project, they'll have the main buttons before them all the time and would rarely have to return home. So that's why I, why I designed it that way in terms of co accommodating people who do not have a full screen browser. Now I just clicked on early years and you, as you witnessed, there was a crossfade. So you remember when I set up my project, I set it up so that every time you clicked on a button, you would have a crossfade transition. Go to study abroad. As I mentioned before, I changed the buttons to be black when the user entered a new section of the app. And this is one instance actually where I added a video to the project. And if you want to learn how to do that, you can visit one of my earlier tutorials. And you can set up videos throughout your project. And you can set it up so it looks just like a book, for example. I mean, this is a great opportunity where you may want to go ahead and add text so that it looks more like a book format, which is kind of what I had in mind, although I kept it simple for demo purposes. Now let's go ahead and see what the app looks like full screen. Okay, this is what the app looks like full screen, and here's my loader image that I put in there as the project preloads. So you see it takes a while, so it's a good idea to have a loader image in place so that people aren't wondering why the screen is blank for such a long time. And voila, that's what the project is supposed to look like in full screen mode. And that's exactly how I set it up using height. I hope that was helpful. And I hope that it has spurred some ideas on your part as far as coming up with some creative ways to use Hype to put together a nice web app for your iPad. Thanks again. This is Tim Brown. I'll see you next time.